chases after us. Just as much as we chase after him, he can better when we're chasing away from him. God continues to chase after us, after us, and after us, and after us, and after us again. Each of us in here has a testimony to when we had no desires to be close to him. But now that we are chasing after him, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 through 19. 
SRNBC has established an endowment program that we might glorify God by building our new church on our land at 2400 Yeah! The endowment program allows participants to purchase a permanent reminder of their devotion to God in SRNBC. The program is designed to provide sufficient, sufficient funds for SRNBC to construct the church facility and repay the mortgage that will be required. If you have any questions concerning the endowment program, please contact Deacon Mickens, Chair Building Committee. You may also support this effort by simply contributing to the SRNBC Building Fund. Contributions to the Building Fund can also be made by visiting the SRNBC website and clicking on the donation button. SRNBC All In 2022 All Things New. Amen. This is this is a reminder from the trustee ministry. No food or drinks are allowed in the building during service. Bottled water is the only beverage allowed. And please make sure to take the bottle with you upon leaving the building. Please be prepared, Sister Vernell Nelson, home. Sister Luann Scott, Capital Rehabilitation Center. Sister Vaya Lopez, Hershey Medical Center. To notify the church of any illness, hospital, hospitalization, or death in your family, please email the Assistant Church Secretary, Sister Jamie Foster, jamiecfoster at gmail.com. Thank you and have a blessed day. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Push it. 
She prays powerful prayer for our students. Solid Rock is in the community, y'all. And we're doing good. Thank you, God, for being the cheers for you. She's been down. Amen. And let's continue to pray for our students as you go back to school. And then, finally, this is one of my uh, best announcements today. Uh, I'm so glad there is a word from the Lord. And I'm so glad to be a preacher in the house.
<laughs> and you see my shirt, it says faith, my dress. Do you have faith that you will not, yes, you have to have faith in Jesus, not with me. Do you have faith that your beautiful updo will not be wet? Yes? Alright, can someone hold this for me? Make sure you can yell. Let's see. Are we going to count down?
So, Father God, we thank you for what we saw yesterday at 2400 Locust Lane. We want to give you praise and glory, Father God, not just for what we saw, but for what is coming, Father God. We're going to walk through the doors.
through our sister Jessica Schlick. Amen. Amen.
harmonic selection by the young adult choir. And then following that, the voice you will hear will be the preacher of the hour, Minister Allison J.
has brought me to pass and doesn't find it hard to give me this place to stand, even when I don't want to. I always can appreciate the support because I'm young in the ministry, but he knows my heart. Amen. And for that, I'm forever grateful. Amen. To Julian Scott. Yeah. Yeah. To my ride or die drag. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To my kiddos, Nadia, Olivia, and Nehemiah. Thank you for your love for your mom during this time. And you don't find it a hassle. You don't say anything. You just say, okay, mom, let's go. All right. So for that, I appreciate that. For the support from Zala Rock, I really do appreciate it. Because you don't know, support goes a long way. Yes. Especially when you're young in the ministry. Yes. So for that, I'm forever grateful. So I'm going to jump into the key verses that I'm going to focus on in Matthew 9. We're going to focus on verses 20 through 22. Jesus said, then a woman who had hemorrhage for 12 years slipped in from behind and lightly touched her robe. She was thinking to herself, if I can just put a finger on his robe, I'll get well. Jesus turned, caught her at it. Then he reassured her, courage, daughter, you took a risk of faith, and now you're well. The woman was well from then on. So if you have looked in the bulletin, my sermon title is, I Got to Get to My Blessing. Yeah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this place. Remove me and insert you. Lord, I ask that you touch me, you guide me, help me to minister your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So if you don't know, I'm a big Olympic fan. Mm -hmm. Huge. I watch the unknown sports, so diving. I can, I can do those things, could critique, I can do all that. I watch water polo, but if you really know me, I'm a swimming and track and field girl. Swimming, I can squat all day. Uh, you can read the secret right there. But track is my thing. There's something about track that it just, I, I can't stop watching. I watch it all day. Forget about working, I just watch it. But in 2016, the Olympics, the U.S. women track and field team was running to make the finals. Allison Felix, who I'm a huge fan on, not because she had my, my same name and that she was black, and there's somebody who has the same name as me, but because she can run her butt off. But in this particular Olympics, Allison Felix was running the second leg and reached the pass to the third, and the baton dropped. And if you know in the Olympics, when the baton hits that ground, it's an automatic disqualification. Mm -hmm. So she kept, she went to the, her team and said, listen, I was hit. I didn't just drop it. I was hit. And everybody was like, nah, you just dropped it. Take this L and keep going. And she said, no. So she, her team believed in her and said, let's go to the Olympic committee and have them review the teams. So she did. They went to the Olympic Committee, they reviewed the tapes, and she was telling the truth. When she went to pass Brazil, passed the baton and swung her hand back across the line and knocked the baton out of her hand. So they automatically got disqualified. But not only did this make this unusual, in order for the USA to get in the Olympic, to get to the finals, they had to run the track by themselves. They had to be 42.70 running by themselves. So all eyes is on you in order to meet the criteria to get to the, to the final. So they ran by themselves and beat it with 41.77. So then we see they make the finals. Now you know Jamaica plays no games. They breathe them at birth with running track. <laughs> And you know, Jamaica always gives us a run for their money. They wind up USA, and the Allison Felix wind up winning gold. Next, next slide, you can all correct. They won gold. So you're wondering, ah, so what does this have to do with, I gotta get to my blessing? See, sometimes we gotta go to God in prayer 
to understand that the devil is beating us at our game. But you got to be determined like Allison's lives in the day to get to your blessing. It doesn't matter how you have to get there. It doesn't matter who's denying you. You just got to get to your blessing. You got to understand that no matter what the test of trial is, there's a blessing on the end. Amen. Amen. So for my note takers, the first point, get to your blessing. No matter what it takes. Be clear. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter who says you can't do it. Get to the blessing. Also, you have to see that the woman, the woman with the issue of blood knew that all she needed to do was touch the hem of that garment and she would be made whole. She didn't care what the other sick people said. She didn't care what the well people said. She didn't care what the disciples said. All she needed was to touch the hem of that garment to get to the blessing that she needed. You got to be determined to get to your blessing despite what everybody else says about you. Listen, if I care what people said about me, I would not be here. You also have to learn when you're trying to get to your blessing, move in silence. Stop talking. Stop running your business. Because the same person that you ran your business to will turn around and backstab you quicker than anybody can do in the church. Move in silence. That's why a lot of you didn't know I was studying to be a minister. I moved in silence because that's what the Lord told me to do. Because I had to defeat my own self first. He had to work inside of me first before I could go out and teach his word. Because listen, if I have naysayers in my voice, I'm going to be a little toxic turvy. And he doesn't want a toxic turvy Christian. He wants to understand what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow him. Prime example, uh, Kevin, I love you. Um, heads up. <laughs> we were in Vegas and I was working on it and I was working on uh, I was working with Reverend Flea and I just the Lord said talk to Kevin about being a minister okay. and the first thing Kevin said to me and it wasn't it wasn't a bad thing he said are you sure and I knew exactly why the Lord had asked me to do that because if I wasn't sure of myself, of the ministry that I was here ready to do, how can I minister to somebody else? Yeah. 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 See, sometimes just moving in silence, you got to defeat your own self, get yourself together. Right. Yeah. So that when people say, they using you, you're going to be like, you're right, he is. He's using me. Despite me having three kids out of wedlock. Despite me not always being the best Christian yeah. I could be, despite me fighting, yeah. despite me doing anything yeah. that I could to stay away from Christ, I still can use me and I still get to my blessing. Right. Right. You have to be determined to move in silence. Yeah. Right. You also have to understand that you cannot make excuses. Listen, I'm still this from Inky Johnson. Always be stronger than your strongest excuse. Wow. Always be stronger than your strongest excuse. Uh, be clear, if you don't know who Nicky Johnson is, uh, dig it up over right next slide. Nicky Johnson is this guy, and if you see his arm, he was a top football player for Tennessee. In September 9, 2006, he got hit in the top. It was right there by a helmet. It broke his brachial plexus. He immediately was bleeding internally, but didn't know. He just knew he couldn't move his arm. They did some couple tests, and they immediately rushed him to the ER to get to the emergency room because he was bleeding internally. They had to remove nerves from his thigh and his other arm to make something so that he at least could hold his shoulder up. Then he determined he was the next to go to the NFL and realized that he wasn't going with an arm like that. But he was determined to get to the blessing that he knew he needed to do, which was to be a motivational speaker. He understood that the Lord had turned his path yeah. and made him a motivational speaker. Yeah. His spot with his arm looks like. Yeah. If that doesn't encourage you, despite what you're going through, yeah. despite what it looks like, yeah. despite yeah. what people say, yeah. get to the blessing. God got you. Yeah. And he will have you. Yes. For my note takers. Point number two. You got to have passions 
slash push forward to get to your blessing. Okay? Right. Amen. <laughs> Passion is defined as strong and barely controllable emotion. Let me say that again for you Passion is defined as strong and bearable controlled emotion. Some of y'all a little too bougie to be sitting in church. Some of y'all a little too bougie. If you think about what the Lord brought you to, it's an uncontrollable emotion. It's an uncontrollable intent to sit in church and think about what the Lord has brought you to. Oh, 
clothes, you just have to warm it up. Warm what? There's <laughs> not enough knots. He's on top of my soul top. What part of that don't you get? Here we go. He was like, okay. Then goes, well, mom, I'm not sure if I really want to be a veterinarian. I think I want to be a reptile person. Okay, please. Please give me the snake that I have. Give me the equipment that I need. And we'll get this snake. She names her Goldie. Goldie? We bring her home. She doesn't eat. Goldie, you about to die. Because I don't know what to tell you. Because I'm not cooking this. Not cooking my soul time. Not do it. Gray keeps going back and forth to, to this uh, place getting frozen mice and trying to get her, get her to eat. She's running from them. I finally had to say, Greg, let's just get alive. Let's just get alive. Goldie couldn't wait for that lot of mice. That joker jumped in. She was waiting. And she kept, she just sits. She's not a swim around, I'm a stomp you, she waits. And I noticed this because I now call myself the snake whisperer when she's about to eat or when she's hungry. And Grant's like, she's not hungry, she's hungry because she's wiggling and all that. But I watched her one time eat. And she sat and waited for the mouse to come to her. And I was like, oh Lord, that's a sermon. And the reason why I brought that up is because sometimes we just have to wait for it to come to us. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to serve around. You don't have to search. If it just sits still yeah. and pray yeah. and wait for it to come to you, it's that you find it hard to You'll find that it'll be easier just to wait. Amen. Listen, I understand that we are impatient people. But 2400 is going to be the right. Get your spirit together to understand that you got to wait on the Lord. Because if you don't wait, you're going to miss your blessing. Understand that. Be patient. Have passion. Push forward despite what the naysayers say. Sit still and wait for the blessing to come. Be clear about that. You have to walk with your head, your head held high, yeah. even when it has you are on your last bit of faith. Yeah. Listen, because 12 years of having an issue with blood, after two weeks of bronchitis, I'm over. Yeah. To sit for 12 years with an issue, and all she wanted to do was just touch the hem, that says a lot right there. I just wait. I just need my opportunity. I just need my chance. And if he walks past, all I got to do is touch the hem. I don't even need him to place his hand on me. Wait. Have passion. Push forward. But know that God's going to show up. Listen, you have to put my note takers, number three. Know your blessing is there. Don't think that it's there. Know that it's there. There's a difference between thinking and knowing. I know God got me. Yeah. Thinking about it is how the devil slips in. You got to know the difference between I walk with my head held high, head held high, because I know my blessings over there. Amen. It may be some valleys, it may be some mountains that I got to climb, but I'm going to still get over there because I know that God is over there. Amen. You have to know. That if you don't know, you better find out quickly. Because the devil say it takes the devil one thing yeah. to, to, to disrupt your mind and yeah. get you off the track. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, that's why you gotta be careful about what you do with music. What was he the angel of? Music. That's the first thing he's gonna get you on. That's why I always tell you, be careful what you listen to in the morning. Oh. I understand the news, some of y'all news listeners, I get that, but that disrupts your spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to prayer. Amen. Go to listen to gospel. Yeah. Start your day right. Don't start it with bad news. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 You already start, you already defeated. Yeah. Yeah. Start your day with good news. Yeah. 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 Start your day in the book. Yeah. Yeah. Start your day with worship. Because yeah, right. yeah. if you don't, you start, you're setting yourself up for a bad day. Yeah. Wow. Listen, everybody knows, it's to the point my coworkers know now. 
they know from 8 to 12, I got lots of music for them. And if it's past 12 o'clock, they usually go, they're working my nerves, or I just forgot to turn it off. One of the two. And I remember, I, as I sit and go through things in life, or if I'm working on my sermon, it's always constantly playing. And my coworker called and said, hey, I was thinking about what, um, what's the news for? Is everything okay? Yes, yeah, fine. What's up? What do you need? And she goes on to tell me what she did. She said, but I appreciate it because every time I hear gospel music, it settles my spirit. Well, yeah. See, you don't know what you're doing, how can it affect the next person. Yeah, that's right, that's right. But you just set that tone of listening to gospel Amen. music. Amen. See, you got to set the tone so that the devil knows today's not the day. <laughs> Sometimes you got to go in with your finger pointing in the attitude. Devil, today's not the day. I got God on my side. I got things to do that the Lord has me to do. And I don't have time to fool with you today. Sometimes you got to set that tone with your own self. I'm going to have a good day. I'm going to have a good day. I'm going to have a day. I'm going to have a day. Jesus went to the cross. Yeah. 
knowing they had to have the passion and the push forward. Listen, being in the garden of the city wasn't easy. That was a passion push forward moment. Where you just have to sit and pray and weep. Because you know what your purpose is. Yeah. And the human force slightly is trying to take over. But you have to have the spiritual connection to, to know I gotta move forward. That's a hard place to be. We troubling over getting a building where he had to go to the cross. Alright. We struggling on that. <laughs> when Jesus had to sit and know that somebody was going to nail his hands, yeah. they was going to put a crown of thorns on his head, yeah. and we cried about a building, All right. <laughs> make it make sense. Mm. It ain't that yes. 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 You have to know that. Yes. You have to understand that we have to wait on the Lord. Yes. Yes. Wait. Wait. Yeah. Because our blessing is coming. Yes, yes, but if yes, you keep stirring yes. the pot, All right. trying to do what you want to do, <laughs> not what God said to you, you're just going to keep stirring. Yes. Yes. You're just going to keep stirring. Yes. But all you got to do is just go, Lord, I trust you. Yes. I'll wait on you. Yes. What do you want me to do while I wait? All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't just wait to do nothing. That's right, that's right, that's right. Wait that's and do something right. else. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I always, when I'm cooking, the kids always, or I always tell them, like, why are you doing wonderful things at once? Because if I'm waiting for, for a boy, why am I sitting and looking? <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? Just sit and look. Okay, I'm going to wait for the water. Let's just wait. Okay. We still waiting. So I don't mind doing something else. And I said to her, you got to learn how to multitask. Yeah. And she was like, what? well, sometimes you're not good at it. Mama said, I'm talking from the spiritual side. Sometimes you got to multitask in your spiritual way. Because if you don't know how to multitask, you're just going to be waiting for you forever. <laughs> you won't move. You won't grow. You won't do what you're supposed to do that God is telling you to do. Because you're waiting at the stove. You just gonna keep waiting. Mm. Understand that concept. While you're waiting for this building, go do something else. Go mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Go put some extra in the place. Yes. 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 Go do some extra. Join the ministry. Do yeah. something else. Yeah. Yeah. So that you can do more while you know. Shut it. 
We over here praying that the building's moving forward. It's still growing. But we over here together from one accord using our faith to keep that growing and keep something else going on. You got to understand, Jesus loves us. He wants us. God got us. Stop believing he don't. If he did it before, he'll do it again. It's still growing. But he got us. So as you keep walking over, just check it. I'm just checking to make sure it ain't burning. Nothing's happening. Okay. I can come back over here. Lord, let me learn something new. What do you want me to learn? Let me put my face down on the word. Let me go in my praying closet. Let me have prayer in the shower. Let me get one with you. So that when that's done, I'm prepared. So when I come back over here. And the church is built. I'm not walking in the same what I wasn't over there. I'm walking in new. I'm walking in prepared. I'm walking in study. I'm walking in worship. I'm walking in so that I know that God got me. And my blessing is here. See, it grew long enough that it's bubbling. But it didn't spill over. So as it's bubbling, I'm still here worshiping. I'm waiting on the community so we can re outreach to Edgemont. I'm waiting on it to do what it needs to do by God's moving and bubbling and sitting. So that when, we're, when it explodes, we're prepared. Yeah. It's yeah. not a new thing. It's not an old thing. It's a thing that we waited for. Yeah. And we'll appreciate better because we waited. Yeah. Yeah. And that God had the blessing. Yeah. That's what you have to understand. Amen. The young adult saying, God's got a blessing. Yeah. What's he say? Put, put your name, name on it. Say it again. A blessing with your name on it. Y'all got to say it with confidence. With your what? With your name on it. Thank you, Aubrey. Now, I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> appreciate it. See, the young adults sing that song. Not because it's a fun song to sing. You have to believe that your name is on the blessing. Yeah. Yeah. You have to know that your name is on it. Yeah. You have to know that as I walk forward, uh, I'm just looking for Allison's part. Are we all together? Okay, let's just go together then. Because our name is on it. See, it's one thing to have a cornerstone with your name on it, but do you believe that it's yours? Do you stand on it and know that it's yours? You have to know that. You have to believe that your name is on your blessing. Yeah. You have to have passion with your name on your blessing. Yeah. You have to push forward when you don't want to with your name on your blessing. Yeah. And you have to know that God got you. Yeah. As the deacons come forward.
God knows you can't find your blessing, but you need to know Jesus. Yeah. You need to get to know Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You need to see him for But know that Jesus wants you. So if somebody that doesn't know Jesus, go see his family. Facebook type, I need to be saved. Know that Jesus wants you. He wants to serve you well. He wants you to have your blessing. That's the first one. The second one. Listen, I messed up. I missed a couple blessings. I ain't been waiting. I've been doing what I want to do. Listen, come on back. Yeah, you still got a blessing what you didn't want. It doesn't stop. It just means you slay a little bit. And that's okay. Thank you. 
take just a few minutes and just close the time. I'm going to ask you if you give some people to come in there uh, to do two things. Uh, number one, we want to uh, acknowledge her family. This is the house person with us today. And uh, we also want to acknowledge uh, Sister Kyla Harvey, who's in the house. Amen. Amen. She is the uh, she is the director of uh, what is it? Just Shalom House. Shalom House. Amen. So, so come on up and introduce me. I want like all all the people, all the kids that are going back to school, all the kids that come forward, all the young people coming back. Come back, all the young people. Come on, praise God for those come. Praise God for Come on, praise God for those come. Come on, people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask the parents to come and stand with the children as well. Because this is a collective church and family and community prayer. Amen. Family, stand with your children as we prepare to go back to school. Amen. Amen. You know, in 1947, while he was a college student at Morehouse University, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King wrote these words. The function of education is to teach one to think intensely and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the true goal of education. Intelligence plus character, that is the true goal of education. Amen? Amen. Let, it, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, starting a new school year often comes with uncertainty and anxiety for students, parents, guardians, caregivers, administrators, faculty, and staff. But God, we know that no matter what the situation, returning back to school, we know that you will do exceedingly and abundantly to prosper our children in the area of education. Father God, help us to find the strength, the peace, the wisdom, solutions, and the help we need in your word and in your promise. God of the universe, the good shepherd who knows each of these by name. Your word says you know the hairs on their head. We know that you have predestined them for a great purpose, even before the beginning of time. Father God, I pray that you would dynamically and personally meet our children at their point of view. At home, in the classroom, in the community, surround every student with capable, caring, family, teachers, neighbors, mentors, coaches, and clergy who will guide them in productive ways that will increase their knowledge, increase their wisdom, build their character, and give them a level of understanding that exceeds expectation. Father God, I pray that there will be a tall hedge of protection around our children as they travel to and from school. Protect them while they're in the school building. God, I ask that you would give our safety monitors uh, to school resource officers, school police officers, and administrators. Give us uncommon knowledge to know how to protect our children while they are in our school buildings, Lord God. Father God, I pray that you would give these a passion for learning that brings joy, that sparks curiosity, intrigue, and prepares them for the purpose for which you created them for. Dear God, thank you for the amazing gift of teachers. I thank you that you have called them and you have gifted them with the ability to teach. We pray that those who have devoted their lives to serving our children as teachers would come to school, that they would be prepared to provide high quality teaching and learning in the classroom. Father God, I ask that you would help them to teach with power, conviction in their content, enthusiasm, and excitement as they strive to impact the academic instruction of our children. 
help our teachers to equip and empower each student from pre-K to 12th grade and beyond. Help them to empower them with knowledge and sound educational skills and the ability to exceed at every grade level. Father God, we pray this prayer in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And the people of God say amen. 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 And I have a charge for our children. I want you to say out loud, I am a promise.